How does a crime of the magnitude of the Idaho Four affect a university's bottom line financially? Hey everyone, it's Lucky with Unfiltered Lucky. And today I want to talk a little bit about the connection between the Idaho Four crimes and the University of Idaho. Now, when I watched the first press conference that law enforcement did just days after these crimes were committed, there was something that struck me as very odd about what law enforcement was telling the public. And that was that there was no danger to the community. They didn't believe that there was any danger to anyone living in the community because they believed that this was a targeted attack. So they believed that everyone outside of this house was safe at this point. So basically what they were telling the public is, we don't have a suspect. We don't know who did this, but it's okay. This, this just was contained in this house. We don't know. Obviously, whoever did this is extremely dangerous, whether it be one individual or multiple individuals. But at this time, they didn't know who committed these crimes. They didn't have a suspect they didn't have a suspect at this time. So someone or multiple people who committed these crimes, who took the lives of four college students with a sharp edged blade was out in the community, but we don't believe that they're a danger to anybody else other than the people in this house. And that's the message that they were trying to relay to the public because they don't want to cause hysteria. They want to they want to comfort the community. Now, I thought this statement was very odd, especially since they did not have a suspect. Had they arrested a suspect already and then made this statement, it would be understandable. But to not have a suspect and not know who committed these crimes and not know whether whoever committed these crimes was still in the community or not, it seemed like a rather odd statement to make. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized that this was the first step, in my opinion, to begin sweeping this under the rug. These crimes happened at a university, the University of Idaho, in a university community. So this isn't a good situation. This isn't a good situation for the University of Idaho. And I believe what they were trying to do was comfort the public to in saying, it's okay. Nobody else is in danger. Now, I think that the community felt a little differently because a lot of students did begin going back home. And a lot of the students at this university began distancing themselves from this university. Imagine if you're a student at this university and this happens and they don't know who did it. So it could be anybody on this campus. So it creates a little bit of hysteria within the community, especially in such a small community. You're talking about Moscow, Idaho. So I believe that it was stated that it's a population of approximately 25,000 people. The University of Idaho, I believe, 
I believe that there was that there's 11,000 students attending the University of Idaho at this time. So the University of Idaho basically carries this small town financially. I believe they said that over just over 50% of the total revenue of Moscow, Idaho is generated by the University of Idaho. So this is this is important. This is an important they've got to handle this situation very carefully. Because you don't want the community and the other students at this college jumping ship. You don't want you know you don't want to lose students. You don't want incoming students to look over the University of Idaho because they feel that it may be unsafe. So you have to handle this situation very carefully. Now, there's two sides of this. You have the crimes that occurred, and then you have the business side of this which is the businesses in which are being affected by these crimes. The income that's being affected by the businesses in Moscow, Idaho, as students begin going back home and residents possibly aren't going out as much because we, we have someone who just took the lives of four people on the loose. So it's going to affect the economy of this small town. So I believe that politics plays played a very big part in this investigation, as well as, as in the information that is being shared. You have to be very careful about the information that you're sharing with the public because at the end of the day, for the businesses in Moscow, Idaho, as well as the University of Idaho, this is all about money. This is all about their bottom line. Now, when law enforcement came out and told the public that they didn't believe that there was any danger, that was basically the first step in convincing the community of Moscow, Idaho, and this college community that everything is okay. Everything's okay. It's all under control. We know that it wasn't under control. But they're going to create that appearance. Now, on December 7th, this is just three weeks after these crimes occurred. Three weeks after these crimes occurred, law enforcement shows up to the residence at 1122 King Road in a U-Haul truck in order to begin moving out the victim's belongings. Now, again, we don't have a suspect. There's no suspect. This is an open crime scene. This is an open crime scene at this house. Now, it's very apparent that law enforcement has alerted the media that they are coming in a U-Haul truck to pick up the victim's belongings. The entire media is in front of this house to cover this story. Now, they go in and they, they, it's weird because it was reported that, and I don't know why it was reported this way. It seems kind of odd to me, but it was reported that this U-Haul pulled up to the house at 1122 King Road at approximately 1122 a.m. 
Another weird coincidence that I noticed about this U-Haul truck is that it has artwork on the side of this U-Haul truck that says Pennsylvania. We don't have a suspect and we don't we don't know anything about Brian Koberger or about where he's from. It's it's probably just a strange coincidence, but I thought that that was a weird coincidence that that U-Haul truck had Pennsylvania on the side of the truck. Now I'm not saying the truck came from Pennsylvania. I know that U-Haul puts all kinds of different artwork on their trucks. I just thought that that was a weird coincidence. So they wanted to make sure, law enforcement wanted to make sure that people could see that they were packing up this crime scene. Again, I believe that this is an effort to try to reassure the public that they have everything under control. But it's also an effort to begin sweeping this under the rug. First, you have law enforcement telling the public, it's okay, it's fine, everything's fine. You're not in danger. Then, three weeks later, we have law enforcement, three weeks, three weeks later, we have, the, we have law enforcement pulling up to an active crime scene in a U-Haul truck to collect their belongings. Now, that was the second step to begin to begin sweeping all of this under the rug because this is a big problem for the University of Idaho. I guarantee you that the higher-ups at the University of Idaho are watching this very closely very closely because this these crimes can affect a lot of a lot of a lot of aspects of the University of Idaho now we also know that during this time the University of Idaho is in talks to acquire the University of Phoenix it's a deal that rain that is reported between 550 and 650 million dollars for the University of Idaho to acquire the University of Phoenix. And the reason that they're trying to acquire the University of Phoenix is because they want to boost their online curriculum. So they want to they want to boost their online presence. Now, just over 50% of the students that attend the University of Idaho are local. They're from Idaho. So they're wanting to branch out. They're, they're wanting to make more money. Because one thing that's important to keep in mind in this whole thing is that the University of Idaho, just like every other university out there, is a business. This is a business. The higher-ups at the University of Idaho are going to be tasked with the job of protecting this investment. Four college students having their lives taken in what is in what's basically a sorority house that's just off of campus by someone with a sharp edged blade in a very gruesome manner. It, it's not a good look for the university, and it's not something that parents of students who are looking at colleges at this time, it's not something that parents are want to see. Now, I know, I know, I know from experience. I have a kid that is away at college and lives at college, and is pretty much the same age as these victims. And I can tell you, as we were going through the process of deciding on which university that my kid wanted to go to, one of the first things that I was looking at 
as a parent, one of one of the first things that I'm looking at as a parent is how safe is this university? How safe is this area where this university is located? Because that's important to me as a parent. So I imagine that other parents who have students going away to college would also be looking into this information. Now, if I'm a parent looking at the University of Idaho for my child, then if I'm looking at if I'm looking at the situation and I see these crimes. So, if I'm a parent and and my student wants to go to the University of Idaho. Well, immediately I see that they have just had four of their students' lives taken by, in a very gruesome manner, in a house just off of campus that involves students. I'm, that's going to raise a red flag for me as a parent. I'm thinking we might look over that one. We might not, you know, now, if, they, now, if, if they have apprehended the individual who committed these crimes, then that might be a little different. You know, if, if one person just went crazy and went and took the lives of four people in this house that's just off of campus, but now they've caught this person and they've eliminated this danger, then that's going to make me think that Okay, maybe it's not, you know, they have this person in custody. This was a one-off incident and they have this person in custody. Maybe that, you know, that might change my mind and, and that might open up that door for my student to go to the University of Idaho. But if I think that there's a possibility that students from the University of Idaho were possibly involved in these crimes and they haven't been caught, I'm definitely not sending my child to this university because now I'm having to question the element and the types of students that are going to this university. What types of dangers are at this university? So that would definitely be something that would put the University of Idaho on the bottom of the list for me as a parent. The University of Idaho knows this. The University of Idaho is in the business of selling education at a premium. Less students means less profit. So the University of Idaho is going to do everything that they can to sweep this under the rug, get this out of sight, because it is going to, going to affect their business. Now, Steve Gonzalez, who's a very smart man, I believe, he understands this. He understands the business side of this because he said in an interview, he basically said, I don't want my daughter's passing to be overshadowed by business. And I understood exactly what he was saying. Because as I said, there's two sides to this. There's people who genuinely want justice. There's people who genuinely want whoever committed these crimes against these students to get caught and for them to be brought to justice. But you also have this other side, the business side. A lot of times these people don't care. A lot of these people would push you in front of a bus for $5 because for this side, 
it's all about the money. It's all about the business side of it. And I understood exactly what Steve Gonzalez was saying when he said that. Because it does feel like politics is manipulating this investigation and what's happening in this investigation. How bad would that look for the University of Idaho if it's found out that a group of their students, some who may be involved with their fraternities, sororities, these are members of their university. How would that look if, if they have this element on their campus? They're going to begin losing money. Now, I talked about the University of Idaho working out this deal with the University of Phoenix. They were trying to buy the University of Phoenix. A lot of people didn't want this deal to happen. A lot of people didn't want the deal to happen with the University of Phoenix. There were even senators that talked about this deal because they had concerns about the University of Idaho buying the University of Phoenix. Now, this deal is going to be very profitable for the University of Idaho. So they're trying to hold this deal together. Meanwhile, they have a quadruple homicide on their hands involving their university. While, the, while these talks are happening, this is a bad situation because a lot of people already don't want this deal to happen. So I feel like they were moving this investigation along. They're trying to move things along as fast as possible so they can get it behind them. I do believe that money... A lot of money has been made off of these crimes. I do believe that money and business has a huge effect on this investigation. Now, in one of my previous videos, I talked about kind of the hierarchy that's involved in the sales of narcotics. There's the same hierarchy when it comes to the government and the business of the government. Our, our criminal justice system is heavily politicized. There's a lot of politics that play into our criminal justice system. That's just the way that it is. Now, in the beginning to mid-July of 2023, so we're talking about, what, seven months? From the time that these crimes occurred, seven to eight months, approximately? They're already talking about demolishing this house. Now, I can understand wanting to demolish this house i don't i can understand that 100 percent. why wouldn't you want to it at this point it's an eyesore it's a memory that people don't want to remember it's also it also serves as a memory that they want to eliminate for any future students coming into this university, they don't, want, they don't want this structure anymore. And I understand that. I understand wanting to demolish this house. Now, they're talking about a memorial being built in this area. Now, I've heard it said that a memorial could possibly be built on this site or possibly... I know that they had talked about a garden memorial on campus. But do you really think they're going to build a memorial on this site after they demolish this house? I don't. I believe they're going to build an apartment complex. They're going to make more money, in my opinion. 
It's all about money, people. It's This university, the University of Idaho, stands to lose a lot of money because of these crimes. So they're watching these crimes very closely. So you have law enforcement telling the public, telling the community of Moscow, Idaho, just days after these crimes occurred without any suspect or any idea of who committed these crimes, that they're not in danger. You have a U-Haul truck that law enforcement brings to the house on December 7th, three weeks after these crimes occurred to an active crime scene. This is an active crime scene. They don't know that they're not going to need what they're taking out of this house. But they're setting up, what they're setting up is the process to demolish this house. Because what they want to do is they want to take the belongings out of the house. Now they're going to say, okay, this is for the families. This, th we want the families to have their belongings. I believe the families want answers. I believe they want the right people held accountable. So it seemed very strange that they would be removing the victim's belongings from an active crime scene. But that was the, another step to moving towards putting this all behind them. Then they start talking about demolishing the house. Nobody has been convicted of these crimes yet. But they're going to demolish this house. It just, it, it, it's all, it's all driven by money. Steve Gonzalez, he understands what's happening. He's bound by this gag order, but he understands what's happening in this situation. He understands that they, they're getting a little reckless with evidence and with this investigation in order to try to appease the university. Like I'm saying, like I was saying about the hierarchy, the government hierarchy, you think that the hierarchy when it comes to selling narcotics is crazy. It's, it doesn't hold a candle to what happens throughout the hierarchy of our government, in my opinion. I feel like the, I feel like the, I feel like Moscow, Idaho, the powers that be in Moscow, Idaho, along with the powers that be at the University of Idaho, are trying to move this investigation as, you know, along as fast as possible. They want to get this behind them. It's affecting their bottom dollar, and they don't want that. There's a lot of people involved in this. There's a lot of investors involved in this. There's a lot of donors involved in this. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of people involved in this that stand to lose money from these crimes. It's sad. It's sad to say that because these are human lives. But a lot of these actions are motivated by money. I believe that the University of Idaho wants to put this behind them as quickly as possible. And I understand that. I understand that they want to move this along. They want to turn the page and, and move forward. And I understand that. But it's not right to speed up this investigation. It's not right to negatively affect this investigation in order to preserve your profits. 
That's not right. And in my opinion, I feel like the families kind of feel like this is happening. You know, they've probably heard this from the higher-ups at the University of Idaho and from law enforcement. They've probably heard, you know, we're trying to handle this very carefully because we don't want to affect the business. We don't want to affect the money side of things. That's not going to go over well with a parent. The, a parent who just lost their child, they don't care about your money. They don't care about your bottom line, your profits. They don't care about that, and they shouldn't care about that. It's a, a very shallow aspect of life, but it's very realistic. The government has their hands in everything. And I truly believe they have their hands in this. And when I say government, I, I, I'm including law enforcement. It's all a hierarchy. These people have bosses that they answer to. And these bosses, their jobs are to watch their profits. Their jobs are to ensure that their business is successful. And these Idaho 4 crimes are causing a problem for this business. And that's why these weird things are happening, in my opinion. Very strange to tell the public they're not in danger when you don't have a suspect. Very strange to pull up in a U-Haul truck three weeks after the crimes were committed, after you have notified the press, notified the media, because you want the media there to cover this and see this U-Haul truck. So, basically putting the idea out there that we're moving this along. We're getting, we're, we're, we're preparing the public for this demolition and for getting this, this, these crimes behind us. And then of course, proposing to demolish the house. A lot of people don't want to demolish this house. You know, Brian Koberger and his attorney had no problem with them demolishing this house. No problem at all. But I think it would be beneficial for the jury to have a walkthrough of this house. And how do you have a walkthrough of this house with the jury if you've demolished the house? It's no longer there. That house, in my opinion, is evidence. That house, in my opinion, is probably one of the biggest pieces of evidence. Now, law enforcement from Moscow, Idaho would come out and say, you know, this house, we've already, we've already started moving the belongings out of this house. We've already processed this house to the fullest. We've had to cut down sheetrock. We've had to cut out flooring. This house now is unsafe for a jury to walk through. Well, yeah, you did all this. You started all this process. You know, I realized you needed to cut down the sheetrock, you needed to cut out flooring so that you could test these things, but you didn't need to start moving the belongings out of this house. You started this process. And then to come, and, and then later on to say, we don't believe the jury should walk through this house because of all the processing that's been done there. And because really, I mean, we've already moved all the furniture out of there and everything anyway. Well, yeah, that's what people were saying as you were moving the furniture into the U-Haul. Why are you moving this furniture? You might need this later on. You got to follow the money in this thing. And there's a lot going on here when it comes to the effects of these Idaho four crimes and how they affect the bottom line of the University of Idaho. It's important to look at this. It's important because... I believe that a lot of the confusion that's happening in this investigation is because that the higher ups are trying to speed this along, move this along. Let's get this behind us. 
I'm with Steve Gonzalez on this one. His daughter's passing should not, should not be overshadowed because of the business of the University of Idaho. It's not fair. It's not fair to any of these victims and it's not fair to any of these parents and families and friends of these victims. It's not fair. They deserve closure and they deserve to know who committed these crimes. They deserve to go to bed at night knowing that whoever committed these crimes and is proven 100% guilty is held accountable. So it's just very shady dealings when you start mixing business with what should be the main focus. And that's finding who out whoever is responsible for these crimes and bringing them to justice. It's business, folks. Stay tuned for my next video and please like and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate everybody who interacts with my page. It really does mean a lot to me. And I know that I say that a lot, but it really does mean a lot to me. And stay tuned for my next video and we'll see you soon.